three reasons why silver is not going up like gold yet. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. I really appreciate you watching my videos, all of them. Wow, panic selling on Wall Street, concern on Main Street. This has been an amazing series of days, hasn't it? I mean, the Fed flinched last week with a federal funds rate cut of a half a point. They did it like before they were scheduled to meet. That's an emergency move, guys. They, they tipped their hand. This is going bad. And the president, he wasn't satisfied. He tweeted out, not enough. We need more. <laughs> the bottom market seemed to agree with him. The 10-year treasury is that, what, 0.7%? Yeah, buy our 10-year IOUs. Guaranteed to lose you money. It's all crazy. But what about silver? Silver dropped. It went down. Why? Well, I'm going to give you three reasons why on this video. And, and at the end, I'm going to give you some good news for us uh, silver stackers out there. So hang in there, all right? Listen up. So why did silver go down while gold was so resilient? Yeah, it dropped some, but it, it's at its recent highs right now. What is it, 1680 roughly right now, I think it is? I think it's around 1680. I mean... Guys, aren't we stacking for just this purpose? Don't we expect silver to, to hang in there, go up, preserve our wealth, you know, while our friends and families who are all in on the stock market see their, their 401ks, you know, go down and the bubble start popping? Isn't, isn't that the reason? Well, for Yankee, <laughs> that's a big reason why. So what gives? Well, first, you got to remember this. Silver is an industrial metal. 60 to 70% of global silver demand is actually from the industrial sector. And that includes jewelry fabrication, all kinds of uses, solar panels, right? That is primarily silver's role in our economy. Yes, there's correlation between gold and gold's price and silver's price, yes, it, and, and gold is incredibly strong right now, very resilient. It's also quite possible that its direct correlation, the ratio, if you will, between silver and gold, could be fading just a bit, all right? And, and, and hear me out, okay? I know you don't want to hear this, <laughs> but I think that could be the case. And what you're doing when you're uh, buying silver is that you're betting that silver will not just be viewed as a industrial metal, but will actually be viewed more and more like a monetary metal. And regardless of what us silver stackers think, people don't see silver that way. Not yet, folks, okay? Yes, we had a, a, a tri-metallic uh, system before. You know, it was, it was gold, it was silver, and it was copper. Check this out. <laughs> I love that. Lady bullion, copper. Copper's fun. But gold, silver, you know, gold, uh, gold and silver and copper, all metallic uh, monetary metals, I should say. All right. But not now. Okay. Will it happen again? Well, I think it's very likely with gold. All right. Central banks around the world, oh, they're stacking this stuff like crazy. They, they view this as money more and more. Gold was declared a risk-free asset at the uh, BIS in Basel, Switzerland. Uh, it was called Basel III. And it, it has really bolstered its supremacy as a monetary hedge. Copper, it, it, it ain't going there, guys. I don't think ever again. And silver? Well... In my opinion, this is not going to be a monetary metal during a crisis, all right? During an economic collapse, when our fiat dollar is you know, hyperinflated, I do see silver becoming much more uh, monetary uh, or viewed much more in a monetary way once again. 
and you know <laughs> that Yankee is prepping for that occurrence, all right? So the relatively poor performance of silver compared to gold, I believe has been largely due to the recognition of the potential for a fall off in global industrial demand for silver, you know, given the weakness in the world's economies. And now, due to the uh, uh, illness that shall not be named on YouTube, <laughs> the threat that the fall off in silver's industrial use is is huge. It's it's even a bigger concern. Think solar panels coming out of China, okay? And I think that's the first reason why we are not seeing silver pop and, and really confirm what gold is doing. Um, the second reason uh, why I think that is the case is because of people's perception of silver during a crisis. Folks, they don't think about silver first. Again, it's all about the gold an author by the name of uh, Peter Bernstein wrote a book back in the 90s, and yes, Yankee is old, <laughs> called the, the Power of Gold, okay? And, and in that book, he said, I quote, gold may again serve as the ultimate hedge in chaotic conditions. Its return to its traditional role as universal money is unlikely, however, unless the time should come when the dollar, the euro, and the yen have all failed to function as acceptable means of payment across international borders. Now, he considered the possibility of uh, uh, chaotic conditions really unlikely when he wrote the book. I mean, shoot, gold was like 250 bucks an ounce. But today, I think it's really likely. In fact, gold is what people flock to in a crisis. You know, gold, back in um, uh, the 2008 financial crisis, all right, gold was used in international settlements after decades of being completely dissed by the monetary systems. I mean, they didn't care much about gold, but they did when the Great Recession hit. Think of it this way. Crisis equals gold. So the, the only reason I think that the, um, the incredible use and rise of gold uh, stopped was because central banks convinced the world that they had fixed the problem. <laughs> or, or maybe they didn't really convince the powers that be because since that uh, Great Recession, the world's central banks have been quietly yet substantially increasing their official gold reserves. In fact, China, let's, let's talk about China for a bit. They have not only substantially increased their official gold reserves, but they've encouraged its private banks to hold large amounts of this stuff, okay? Gold is such an important part of the Chinese culture and the banking system. Did you know that most large banks in China offer savers the opportunity to go in and buy Gold bars and coins. I mean, can, can you imagine that in the U.S.? Can you imagine going into the bank and saying, yeah, I'd like a, a one ounce uh, gold eagle, please? <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> so gold is really becoming more and more acceptable to central banks around the globe. Of course, here in America, shoot, we have such a strong anti-gold mindset that yeah, it really took hold back in the 80s and the 90s. And it still exists today. But I think it's going to change rapidly as uh, this crisis starts to increase. So in summary, the first thing, first reason I should say, is that silver is seen through an industrial lens. I think it will change, but not right now. And second, gold. Gold is a safe haven monetary asset, and it is increasingly so. But there is a third reason. Changing mining practices. Today, most silver mining companies aren't that reliant on silver. Think about, yeah, think about that. 
I'll say it again. Most silver mining companies aren't that reliant on silver anymore. More than half of all silver mining companies now rely on a combination of, of gold or, or base metals to comprise at least half of their sales. All right. Put in put it in another way. Most silver miners expect to generate less than half of their revenue on silver. Some are, you know, a little bit more balanced, uh, like I think it's Hecla Mining. Um, they're probably the most balanced mining uh, company of them all. They've got a, a third of their revenue production coming from silver, a third coming from gold, and a third coming from other base metals. But guys, this is a sea change over the last few decades. And in a sense, I believe it has helped rewrite the ratio, if you will, between gold and silver. You know, you're, you may not agree with Yankee on this. So let me know in the comments, but I think 70 to 1 may be all we should expect in a crisis. I don't know. Maybe maybe it'll be lower than that, but I really think that uh, silver mining has had a lot to do with uh, where we're at in terms of our ratio. Um, the closest uh, mining silver, uh, the, the, the closest silver mining stock that investors you know, can get into a pure play is um, uh, First Majestic Silver. Okay, I think they net nearly 70% of their revenue from silver. I think they only get like a sixth of their revenue from gold. All right, I actually got into First Majestic myself. Uh, and uh, yeah, it is uh, <laughs> one <laughs> mining stock out of five that I got into on Tuesday that is actually pulling my portfolio down a bit. <laughs> Silver, yeah. But, you know, as of Saturday, when I did this video or doing, am doing this video, I'm up 1.5%. So not all that bad for less than a week's worth of investing in silver uh, or in mining stocks. Um, you know, I, I just think that the increased reliance on gold and other base metals by silver mining companies is, is a big deal. It could be one of the reasons why uh, we have the ratio we have, why silver hasn't really popped. And, you know, it isn't all a bad thing that they do that, all right? If, if you're into uh, investing in silver mining stocks, we need to really pay attention a lot more than just with what silver is doing uh, with silver spot price. We have, to, we have to watch very carefully the underlying movements in prices of all physical metals, especially gold, because, because a big move in silver doesn't necessarily mean that silver stocks are going to go up, all right? In other words, when it comes to mining, <laughs> things have really changed. We need to be laser focused on what gold, ah, gold <laughs> is doing. Oh my word, I have a gold spillage. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You're probably saying, Yankee, fine, okay. <laughs> but give us some good news about silver. Come on, I'm stacking silver like crazy. I just finished my monster box. So give us some good news. Well, um, the correlation, okay, I mentioned it before. It's not completely gone, right? Gold and silver do move uh, in tandem a lot of times. It, silver is still a valuable and rare commodity okay and it does a lot of times confirm what gold does all right quite dramatically sometimes i've seen that happen a lot too so so don't give heart don't don't lose heart all right silver still does um, correlate to some degree with gold all right second reason why i think you, you you gotta hang in there with silver is we saw this pullback before in silver back during the early parts of the great recession it, it did the same thing. It, it pulled back and then boom, shot way up. Why? Well, I, I think then as, as, as now, a lot of people get slammed. You know, their, their portfolios dwindle, okay? They needed to sell some of their stocks, either because they needed the cash or because if they're playing around with margin, uh, margin, they, they had a margin call and they had to sell. And they didn't just sell their shares in the S&P 500, they had to sell other kinds of assets like 
silver and gold. I think that's kind of what's happened now, especially with silver. Not so much with gold. People seem to be wanting to hold on to their gold. They think something big may be about to happen, but they did sell some silver. I don't think that's going to, you know, last long. I think silver is due to go up, way up, okay? And and lastly, I'm going to leave you with this. I mentioned the gold to silver ratio. I mentioned that, you know, I thought 70 to 1 might be the new normal. Maybe what we should be expecting in the future during a crisis. I don't know. Maybe it's less. But let's say it goes to 80 or 85 to 1, which all of us probably consider is really, you know, realistic, right? Then a silver investment would still be more profitable than a gold one. With gold around what is 1680? Well, pretty close to 1680. An 80 to 1 ratio would bring silver up to 21 bucks an ounce. How about that? <laughs> that would be awesome. And if we get a crisis that turns into a full on collapse, <laughs> you're going to want a lot more of this. Okay? <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. This was a lot of fun to do. Make sure you subscribe right there. Make sure you, you, you hit the thumbs up for the like, all right? And for goodness sakes, buy more precious metals, all right? And until next time, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.